Hey gang, Mocha Boy here. Welcome back, and thanks for tuning back in. So we are going to be covering the follow-up to the NACE32 chip replacement video. If you were successful and you got the chip in place and you, you had a, su a successful power-up, you're now at the point where you can start pushing firmware to the board. Now part of the issue is, is that when they come from the, um, the manufacturers, these chips are blank. And although the bootloaders are stored in ROM, uh, you still can't access <laughs> That you can't access the chip over USB until you get some firmware loaded on there. It's um, it's a long story. Uh, I'll you know I'll, I'll um, spare you the, the details. But um, the plan here is to use this device over on the left hand side. And don't let this intimidate you. This is an eleven dollar board that you can buy on on DigiKey. This is a discovery board, which is um, an STM32 discovery board. What it comes with are these two. Um, are these two interfaces here. Now, if you've got an ST-Link programmer that would go into here, um, when I started doing this, ST-Link programmers were still about 50 bucks, but somebody sent a link to me showing me one that was $4, so that might be something to look into uh, for, for later. Um, the interface that I use is this set, this bank of pins right over here on the left-hand side. This is the serial wire debug uh, port. And uh, there are three pins on here um, that I'll point out. In, in order, this is pin one, which is normally VCC, but I don't get any, uh, I don't get any power out on that pin. Uh, this is the clock pin, this is the ground pin, and then this is the IO or data pin. So you're, you're only going to be using these three pins. Now those go into the back of here. So you have pin one, again VDD, um, and then this is the IO pin, and then the clock pin, and then all of these are ground pads. So really you're talking about having to solder in three wires, IO, clock, and then ground down here, and then hook them into IO, clock, and ground right there. Now one other thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is just make sure you, um, you remove the jumpers here. When you get this board, it'll come with two sets of jumpers. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you pull those off. If you don't pull those off, you'll end up programming this chip, not, that, not, um, not the serial wire debug target. Uh, one of the things that we'll also do, uh, one of the things that you will also have to account for is an external power supply. Now I, um, you know, only because I like to overcomplicate everything, <laughs> I, have, I have an, ex, uh, an external 5 volt power supply that I dial in and then just hook directly into the, uh, the power rails. And then I let the voltage regulation step that down to 3.3 volts and then that's what powers the chip. If you're feeling, um, you know, if you're feeling adventurous, you can take power directly off of here. It's, it's completely fine. Um, the two sets of power pins that you can use are this VDD pin here. That's, uh, that's three volts out on that pin, or you can use three volts out on this pin. So if you, um, if you wanted to do, you know, if you wanted to solder in four wires, then you would go, um, you know, three volt. Now remember, it's three volts, not five. Uh, th three volts there, IO, clock, and then ground. Um, when, you, when you power the servo rail, remember, that hits the, the Schottky diode and that 3.3 voltage, 3.3 uh, volt, uh, voltage regulator, and then that's what powers the STM32. So just a couple things there to, to, to note. Uh, if you're working on a CC3D, CC3Ds come with their own serial wire debug uh, port. It's uh, down here on the bottom, and uh, you know that has the pins that you need. Let me see if I can read those. Serial wire, uh, I'm sorry, IO clock, debug ground. And then, uh, yeah, this is the, uh, the Revo board. Um, same thing, the serial wire debug pins are on the bottom, um, but um, you know, just pointing that out as, as an example. So yeah, the process is pretty simple. We're gonna we're gonna go grab ST the ST Link software, get it configured on on this on the um, the laptop, grab the firmware, and then uh, solder everything up and push some firmware. So stay tuned. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is uh, just get the header soldered in. Um, these these headers are, are, are rather the pads are left there because there's an actual part that you can um, you can solder onto there but uh, you know since we all run low profile uh, installations then it doesn't really make any sense to, to do so we'll go ahead and pre tin this is the ground pad and again all four all four of these pads are ground pads so you can use any of them okay solder pads are nice and shiny that'll make it a lot easier to uh, to just tack down the header Actually, it doesn't matter. You could just solder them to both if you wanted. Not a big deal there because it's all the same ground line. It's sloppy, but you know, <laughs> whatever. All right. So clock is this other pin here. And 
And then IO is the set of pins right up here. You don't have to use uh, you know these colors. You can use whatever, whatever you want. This is just a regular like receiver um, header. That you should have like tons of these lying around. Okay, and then once once everything's tacked down, you're uh, you're ready to go ahead and plug this into your uh, into your F three discovery board. Uh, just remember, let um, dial in five volts. We we are supplying the servo rail with 5 volts, which will step that down to 3.3 volts before it gets to the uh, chip, so just remember that. Okay, so uh, we're ready to get started with the flashing process. We're going to need a couple of quick things. Uh, you're going to need the ST-Link utility, and that's the, uh, the URL for it right now. I'm, I'm going to be running version 3.7, so go ahead and get that downloaded and installed on your system. I think there's some uh, device drivers as well as a reboot that are, that are required. And then the other thing that you'll need is um, the hex file, uh, the firmware of your choice. You have your option of clean flight, so, um, or, or base flight, or, or even the Boris B projects, or any of the, uh, the other derivatives that, that run um, you know, some of the plain specific uh, hex files. Um, hex files are available on, on cleanflight.com for, for them, and then for Boris B's uh, beta flight, uh, that's the URL right up there, I'm running his RC groups thread, which links out to his GitHub repository. And then, um, yeah, so just grab the, the hex file of your choice and then just tuck it away someplace where you can find it. And then uh, go ahead and plug in. Now, over over here, uh, this is the STM32. Again, um, sorry, this is the discovery board. And just note the um, note the pin out here, the plugs. We've got, uh, we've got IO, ground, and clock. So IO is white, ground is black, red is clock. And then that all goes into the back of here. So IO, clock, and ground. And then obviously the uh, five, volt, um, five volt power supply coming in through the servo, servo rail, which gets stepped down to three volts uh, for the chip. Or you can, you can tap three volts out of that VDD line there, or that three volt pin right there. So you can work that out on your own and uh, just figure out how you want to power the board. So go ahead and plug in your, your discovery board. You'll see those lights flash up. Go ahead and launch the ST-Link utility. The first thing you're going to want to do is uh, just click that open icon, clean flight maze. Uh, that's loaded into memory and ready to go over to the target. So now at this point, go ahead and power up your NAS, your, uh, your NAS board. And that little blue light shows us that we're ready to go and you're going to go ahead and click program and verify. This is the easiest part of the whole process. You'll get this uh, dialog box and once you're ready to go just hit start and then just sit back and relax. The whole process takes about 20 seconds. Um, it goes very fast and then if you do everything right uh, when, this sh when this board reboots we should see all of the, uh, the blinking LED status indicators ready to go. Now um, for UCC 3D users out there, there's a very special process for how this works. You actually do have to install a custom bootloader on the CC 3D chips because those don't come with CP2102 uh, serial converters. Um, it, the chip handles all of the, the serial connections, so that's what you need the custom bootloader for. You know what, and of course in the course of um, grabbing this board, I realized this is one of the boards that's actually working but had busted LEDs. So the, the firmware's loaded on there, uh, but what I did want to show you is just what it would look like when you go to reboot, I mean, this is what you would see when, whenever any NACE board uh, powers up, which is, uh, you know, the black, the red, the green, or in this case, orange lights blinking and flashing as the, uh, the chip goes to boot up. So at that point, you're done. And um, yeah, you can, you're ready to, to connect this, this guy over USB to the configurator to, to continue on with your configuration. So um, yeah, <laughs> except for the LEDs, which didn't quite work out the way I thought they would. Uh, this one is successful and we can move on to the rest of the configurations.